So now we see that for an anharmonic oscillator, so not just a harmonic oscillator, which has energy levels of n plus a half h nu, but for an anharmonic oscillator that exhibits some non-harmonicity, some anharmonicity, we have this correction to the energy levels. Uh, since uh, if we're talking about spectroscopy, it's more convenient rather than talking about the energy levels themselves to talk about them in units of wave numbers. So if I take the energies, divide by hc, so this is now in units of wave numbers, that equation looks very similar. We've just changed the frequencies or h times nu for energies. We've changed those into units of wave numbers. Likewise, for the anharmonicity correction, divide by h and c. Dividing by c turns the frequency into a frequency in units of wave numbers. So that's a more convenient version of the same equation when we're talking about spectroscopy. And this equation is going to help us understand why it is that diatomic molecules have the spectra that they do in the infrared portion of the spectrum. So to understand why that's true, let's calculate, for example, the difference in energy when I make a transition from one level to another in a diatomic molecule that's behaving like a harmonic or an anharmonic oscillator. So that energy difference is If I'm making a transition from one level to the next level up, the difference between the n plus first energy and the nth energy, or if I do that instead in units of wave numbers, then that is the difference in energy between this equation with an n plus 1 and this equation with an n. So that's going to work out to be the n plus first energy level. Instead of n, I'm going to use n plus 1. So n plus 1 plus another factor of a half gives me n plus 3 halves. Uh, and I'm in units of weight numbers, so I don't need the Planck's constant. And the anharmonicity correction looks like n plus 3 halves squared times the anharmonicity correction. So that's the energy of the n plus first energy level. If I subtract from that, the energy of the nth level, n plus a half for the harmonic oscillator, and n plus a half squared. I'm minus this negative, so that gets a positive sign for the anharmonicity correction. So there's some cancellation that happens here. n times nu tilde minus an n times nu tilde, those cancel, and I'm left with just 3 halves minus 1 half, or 1 factor of nu tilde. A little bit of algebra is needed to take n plus 3 halves quantity squared minus n plus 1 half quantity squared times this x e nu tilde sub e. So I've got n plus 3 halves quantity squared. That looks like n squared twice 3 halves is 3. And 3 halves squared is 9 over 4. That's what I get by squaring n plus 3 halves, multiplying x e nu e. And then I've got a positive opposite sign, n plus 1 half quantity squared. That's going to be n squared plus n plus 1 over 4 x sub e nu sub e with a tilde on top. The cancellation, I've got a minus n squared and a positive n squared. Those cancel completely. I've got a minus 3n and a positive 1n. Those almost cancel, but not quite, or, or partially cancel, but don't. So minus 3n plus 2n is minus 2n. That's what's, uh, OK, minus 2n. And I've also got 9 fourths with a negative sign, 1 fourth with a positive sign. So those leave me a minus 2. That minus 2n and minus 2, those are all multiplying x sub e, nu sub e, tilde. So if I rewrite that as fundamental vibrational frequency in units of wave number plus, uh, let's say, minus twice n plus 1. So minus 2n minus 2, that's the same as minus twice n plus 1. That's the size of the anharmonicity correction. So if we make some. Uh, sense out of that equation, the energy in units of wave numbers needed to go from one level to the next one up 
isn't just the harmonic oscillator frequency, but it's the harmonic oscillator frequency minus a little bit, and that and harmonicity correction depends on which level I'm in. That gets larger, the correction gets larger as n gets larger. So what that means is if we draw an energy ladder, the harmonic oscillator has energy levels at 1 half h nu, 3 halves h nu, 5 halves h nu, and so on, evenly spaced for the perfectly harmonic oscillator. The anharmonic oscillator, with this anharmonicity correction, those energy levels have all decreased. The lowest ones decrease a little, the upper ones decrease more, the higher ones decrease even more. So that anharmonicity correction is those air downwards arrows I've drawn that have just lowered the energy by a little bit. The fact that the upper levels get corrected by more for this anharmonicity correction than the lower levels mean that every time I make a transition, if I make a transition from the zero state up to the first state, it's not h nu, it's a little bit less than that. If I go from the first state up to the second state, it's not h nu, it's not even h nu minus that small correction, it's h nu minus an even bigger correction. So if we uh, look at what that means for an actual molecule, if I bring up a graph here of the spectrum for an actual diatomic molecule, that's going to be the absorption in the infrared for the carbon monoxide molecule. And remember what we talked about before is that the fundamental vibrational frequency, we expected this spectrum when we were only thinking about the harmonic oscillator, we expected it to be centered around the fundamental vibrational frequency of 2170 wave numbers. What we actually see is it's centered a little bit lower. It's redshifted. The center of the spectrum is redshifted from the fundamental vibrational frequency. We can explain why that's true now. So for carbon monoxide with this fundamental vibrational frequency, 2170, the anharmonicity correction x sub e times the fundamental vibrational frequency, that is 13.3 inverse centimeters. So if I want to know what is delta e in units of wave numbers to go from, let's say, the zero state up to the first state, according to the equation we've just figured out, we could just plug into this expression, calculate the energy of the first minus the energy of the second. I'm sorry, the energy of the first minus the energy of the zeroth state. Or we could use this expression we've just derived. It's going to be 2170 is the fundamental vibrational frequency as a wave number. If I subtract, so if I'm going from n equals 0, n plus 1 is equal to 1, so I'm going to subtract twice the inharmonicity correction. So 2170 minus 27 leaves me 2143 wave numbers. And that is, in fact, you can see from this diagram, 2150 is right here, 2140 would be about there. This is, in fact, right at 2143 inverse centimeters. So the cause of this redshift in the absorption spectrum is because of the anharmonicity. The, the decrease in the energy levels because of the anharmonicity is what causes the spectrum to be redshifted and in fact, it helps explain another mystery about this spectrum. Let's say I were to do the same calculation, not for the 0 to 1, but for the 1 to 2 level. So I'm going not from n equals 0 to n equals 1, but from n equals 1 to n equals 2. We expect that to be redshifted a little further because n has gotten larger or because the upper states are uh, decreased in energy even more by anharmonicity. So in fact, that's true. If we repeat that calculation with the numbers we've already got, that's going to work out to be uh, subtracting another uh, uh, 26 wave numbers from this value. That's going to end up with a value of 2117 wave numbers. So we'd expect to see the same sort of spectrum, but centered not at 2143, centered at 2117, centered about here. And in fact, you may have noticed this, especially if you're looking at this on a large enough screen, there is, in fact, very small, if you look closely, down here, there's a whole extra series of peaks that has the same shape as the, the spectrum we've already seen, but much smaller. And it is, in fact, centered around 2117. 
this would be the n equals 1 up to n equals 2 transitions. You can't see that, so the n equals 1 up to n equals 2 transitions occur here. The reason they're so small, they're much less intense than the main sequence of these uh, absorption peaks, is because there aren't many molecules. Remember, the populations of the vibrational states for diatomic molecules are primarily, overwhelmingly, in the n equals 0 state, in the ground state. There's not very many molecules in the n equals 1 state sitting around waiting, able to accept a photon to jump up to the n equals 2 state. There are a few. There's a small number of them. So they can absorb a little bit of the light that comes to them, but that light isn't centered at 2143. It's, it's again, redshifted by a little bit more, so it's less intense and redshifted further. So anharmonicity helps us explain many of the features now of this uh, absorption spectrum in the infrared for diatomic molecules like carbon monoxide. It actually is going to help us explain another mystery about these uh, infrared spectra as well, and that's what we'll talk about next.